everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Samantha, and today we're going to be talking about books. I'm like, here to go today. Um, more specifically, we're going to be talking about the first Steinbeck book I read for 2023. Uh, if you're new here, this year I decided that I was going to read more Steinbeck and more Hemingway, mostly because there's so many references to Hemingway in literature and normal and contemporary books. Um, and also, I decided to read Steinbeck because one of my favorite books of all time is East of Eden, and I just kind of want to solidify the idea that Steinbeck is my favorite author. So I kind of want to go back throughout his um, publishing history and read all of his books. Today, we are going to start with the first book. As funny as it is, it is the last book that Steinbeck wrote, and that is The Winter of Our Discontent. Um, so, let me tell you about this book. This book is about Ethan. He is a or veteran um, coming back to his hometown he basically it's about him and his disillusionment with the American dream um, he works as a grocer in a obviously in like a commissary in a grocery situation um, however he lives in a small town and his family used to have money however his father did some bad investments and they lost it all um, not only did his family have money but they also have a lot of history with this town you can find it really hard to come back from the war and kind of be stuck as this grocer. Um, I think he's not necessarily being, feeling embarrassed by it, but um, the people around him are. So that's kind of the issue as well. Um, there's a lot of social commentary on peer pressure. <laughs> um, lots of people are pressuring Ethan to do something with the money that his wife has from her brother-in-law, his her brother, who I believe they don't spe specify, but he did die, and I'm assuming it's from the war. Um, but she inherited a lot of money from him and everyone is pressuring him to do something with it, like be rich again, be better again. Um, and so you really like inside Ethan's head and he's just going through all of these questions of like, like what is money? <laughs> what is the American dream? Is it to be rich? Or is the American dream to be a father? Or is it to be, you know, live a small town life and just be happy? Um, there's a lot of questions in here as far as like, what does money do? Where does money come from? Why is money so influential? Why does does a lot of money equate to power? Um, and what those dynamics are. Ethan also has a lot of internal struggle with this. So not only is he feeling pressure from his wife and, this, and the society around him, his social group, to invest his money and become rich again, but he's also having a hard time, like I said, with how to get rich. And the fact that a lot of these deals and a lot of these investments that are being given to him are kind of back alley deals. Like they're not the most morally upright situations that he's finding himself in. So he's having a hard time with the morality of getting this money, making these investments, being rich again, having a lot of money. Um, and that's also played on the backdrop of even being a war veteran. So there's a lot of conversations in his own head about how he went to war. He killed people. Um, he did that all because his country said that that's what he needed to do. Um, in his in his mind, it is is obviously immoral to kill another human being. So he's having this question of like, why was it so easy for me to go overseas and do that, kill another human being, but it's not easy for me to invest my wife's money and and help my family by doing so. Um, not only that, but sacrificing other friendships. For my family. Um, specifically, he has a childhood friend named Danny, and tragically, he in his adulthood became an alcoholic. And it, Ethan's presented with the situation of do I take advantage of Danny and his alcoholism in order to progress myself and my family? Um, I'll let you read the book to figure out if whether or not he does that, <laughs> but it's very, it's very poignant, it is very heartbreaking, and it's very heart wrenching. Um, but alongside of that, I do want to make mention that Ethan is a character. Um, he's, <laughs> he's sarcastic. He's very odd. It's very strange being inside of his head. I never know um, if he's mad or if he's joking or like what's actually going on inside of Ethan's brain. And I found that to be absolutely intriguing. It was one of my favorite parts. Um, also his love for his wife was really, was really beautiful. Um, Steinbeck has a way of writing where he can say the simplest things and they can be so freaking beautiful. Um, that being said, I will actually, I do want to talk about a couple things. I'm going to read some quotes. Let's see. There is one at the very beginning where he's talking about his wife and it's absolutely adorable. And not only did I have to tell 
the person I was, Jesse, who I was buddy reading this book with, but I actually busted into the garage and told my husband it. Okay. Sorry, it took me a really long time to find that, so let me bring it take myself. So basically I'm talking about Ethan's love for his wife, um, and there's a several examples of, like, John Steinbeck's beautiful writing portraying this love for his wife. In this segment, he's, Ethan is discussing how he met Mary. And he says, I can see both of us, maybe more clearly now than then, a nervous, frightened, second Lieutenant Holly with a weekend pass, and the soft, puddle-cheeked, sweet-smelling darling of a girl, and triply all those, those because of war and textbooks. How serious we were, how deadly serious. I was going to be killed, and she was prepared to devote her life to my heroic memory. It was one of a million identical dreams of a million olive uniforms and cotton prints. And it might well have ended with the traditional Dear John letter, except that she devoted her life to her warrior. Her letters, sweet with steadfastness, followed me everywhere, round, clear handwriting, and dark blue ink on light blue paper, so that my whole company recognized her letters and every man was curiously, uh, curiously glad for me. If I hadn't wanted to marry Mary, her consistency would have forced me to, to for the perpetuation of the world dream of fair and faithful women. Also, this line right here I just stumbled across, it said, I tried to think how it had been before Mary, and I couldn't remember or how it would be without her, and I could not imagine it, except that it would be a condition bordered in black. <laughs> it's so sweet and kind. Um, there's also a couple of quotes from um, his time in the military, so she's discussing his experiences with war and comparing it to the situations that he's finding him in, himself in now. He's talking about the other soldiers um, in, his, in his company. He says, they were awarded for wildness, for wilderness. No man had, on earth had had less murder in his heart than I, but they made another box and crammed me in it. The times, the moment, demanded that I slaughter human beings, and I did." So he's discussing how he's able, like, once again, that situation of, like, how is he able to kill people, but he can't just take advantage of a good deal and make money for his family, right? There's another um, quote that I found to be very, like, just Steinbeck's writing. <laughs> very poignant. So he's discussing that there's an airline close to where his house is and you can hear the jets come over and he's experiencing um, nightmares from it. So he, when the jets go over, all he can think about is is his time in war and it says, I think what brought that back was the jets. All that enormous effort and time and money to stockpile all that death. Would we feel cheated if we never used it? We can shoot rockets into space, but we can't cure hunger or discontent. So basically I'm confirming to you guys that Steinbeck probably is my favorite author of all time. Um, those are just a, a couple of samples of the writing. Um, now we'll get back to your regular programming. <laughs> um, I know I didn't give you much background on John Steinbeck. I might have to do an entire video dedicated to that. I know with Don Quixote, um, the video that I'll link down below where I kind of went through that classic, I did kind of um, compare Miguel de Cervantes' life to Don Quixote and how he came about writing that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna save that because I feel like Steinbeck himself being a war veteran I feel like that's reflected a lot in here. But I want to read more from him so I can give you a little bit more of an overall general idea of where that's coming from. Um, but yes, I'll, if you can't tell, this is definitely one of the five out of five stars for me. Um, for your purposes, this is about a 310 page book. My my edition is about 270. Um, it is I would recommend for sure for new readers to classics, new readers to literature, for your everyday reader. Um, once you get past some of the slang from the 19, I think this one was set in the 1960s or 1950s, um, they do have a couple of weird odd phrasings that I had to kind of bypass or just think about for a second or reread because I was like, what are they actually trying to say? Um, but it, it does add to a little bit of the charm of reading this book. Um, once you get past that and once you like cue into Ethan's mentality and his perspective, um, you the, the book just flies by. It absolutely flies by and you really fall your, find yourself falling in love with all of these characters. So yes, I do highly, highly recommend. Before I let you go um, with this wonderful recommendation of The Winter of Our Discontent by John Steinbeck, just write it down. Um, I will mention that, side note, there is some magical realism in this book that is never explained. So if I didn't already have you hooked with the themes and the writing and the quotes and my own personal recommendation for this book, there is magical realism in here. Uh, there's uh, one of his, one of the other characters is a witch. Um, there's a weird stone that is passed down throughout his family. Um, there is weird 
daydreaming, drugged out sort of situations with Ethan. So if I didn't get you with everything else, maybe I would, I, I got you a little bit with like the weirdness of this book. Um, but that's it, okay? I promise you that's it. I will see you guys later. If you want to see more from me, go ahead and subscribe. I'm going to be reading Steinbeck and Hemingway throughout the year. If there's a book that you would recommend that I read next, go ahead and put it down below as well. Um, if you've read this book, tell me your thoughts. And I think that's it. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later.